rise to the occasion, with Alma Mater, the nourishing mother. English Language Essentials, is a part of the English Made Easy curriculum, by Alma Mater. English Speaking Basics, the absolute minimum, you should know, to speak in English. 1. Subject. 2. Predicate. 3. Verb and 4. Article. What is a subject? The subject, in a sentence, is who, or what, you are talking about. Every sentence needs a subject. If you don't have a subject, then the sentence, is incorrect, and nobody will understand, what you are talking about. The subject is underlined in the following sentences. I am hungry. My brother is very smart. That computer is very expensive. We are going to the store now. My sister and I will be waiting here. The building is very big. When are you going to eat lunch? Why are they waiting in line? Who is going to take you to the store? The subject is an important part of the sentence as it tells us who or what is being spoken about. What is a predicate? The predicate in a sentence is the section that informs the person what the subject is or what it is doing. It is a phrase that contains the verb. The verb is always in the predicate. The predicate is underlined in the following sentences. I am hungry. My brother is very smart. That computer is very expensive. We are going to the store now. The building is very big. What is a verb? A verb is an action, existence, or occurrence. In the simple sentences we used so far, the verb is mostly in the existence form. They are am, is, and are. Other types of verbs are action verbs such as wash, run, throw, jump, dance, laugh, learn, teach. Here are some sentences to help you understand. I need to wash my face. Mike is laughing. Kisher is training, Jack is walking. A verb can also start at the beginning of the sentence. Throw the ball at the catcher. Run towards the finish line. It is important to understand the verb, but having just a subject and a verb is not sufficient. For example, jail run is not a complete sentence. With the predicate, we can turn the sentence into a proper sentence. Jill is running. Proper, complete, and meaningful sentences have a subject, and predicate containing a verb. A, an, and the are all articles. A and an have the same meaning. They are both indefinite articles. They are only different depending on what word or sound is following. There are five vowels A, E, I, O and, U, in the English alphabet, the remaining 21 letters, are consonants. You should use A when the following word starts with a consonant. A dog, A boy, A building, A hamburger. You should use an when the following starts with a vowel sound. An eagle, an umbrella, an elephant, an awesome book. The or the, is a definite article. The difference is if the noun or subject you are talking about is specific or not. I am going to a coffee shop, no specific coffee shop. I am going to the coffee shop, a specific coffee shop both the speaker and listener know. I am going to a library, no specific library. I am going to the library, a specific library both the speaker and listener know. When and when not to use an article. One common rule, to keep in mind, is that articles are not used when referring to a name, or proper nouns. The boy was running very fast boy is a common noun, hence the article that is used. Mike was running very fast, Mike is a name or proper noun, hence no article is used. Another example of when not to use an article is when referring to general things in conversation. Too much alcohol is bad for you. Cigarettes can cause lung cancer. When and when not to use an article. When you are referring to sports, you do not need an article. Note the following examples. I love playing badminton. Football is a dangerous sport. 
In most cases, you don't need an article when referring to a country, except when the name is referring to multiple countries, or regions. For example, if you say England or Scotland, you don't need an article, but if you are referring to the United Kingdom or the United States, then you do need an article. We will learn a bit more in detail regarding this. There are eight basic parts of speech, in the English language. We need to learn these basics, to advance further in grammar, and also in sentence formations. They are very simple individually, but can create complications, when used in multiple combinations. Hence, we need to understand, their usage carefully. One noun, noun, is the name, of a person, place, or thing, examples Thomas, Caribbean, ship. Two pronoun, a pronoun, is a word in the sentence, that takes the place of a noun, I, you, he, she, it, ours, them, who. Three verb, verb, is the word in the sentence which identifies action, or state of being, sing, dance, believe, be. Four adjective, adjective, is the word in the sentence, which modifies, a noun, in other words, it adds meaning, or shows, the quality of the noun, hot, lazy, funny. Five adverb, the adverb, is a word, in the sentence, that modifies a verb, adjective, or other adverb, softly, lazily, often. Six preposition, preposition, is a word, that shows the relationship, between a noun, or pronoun, and other words in a sentence, up, over, against, by, for. Seven conjunction, conjunction joins words, phrases, and clauses, and, but, or, yet. Eight. Interjection, an interjection, is a word, that expresses emotion, ah, whoops, ouch, wow. A noun, is a word, which is a person, place, thing, or idea. Nouns, give names, of concrete or abstract things, in our lives. As babies learn mom, dad, or milk, as their first word, nouns should be the first topic, when you study, a foreign language. Noun, is the subject, or object, in most sentences. For the plural form of most nouns, add s. Bottle bottles. Cup cups. Pencil pencils. Sticker stickers. Window windows. Desk desks. Mirror, mirrors. For most nouns, ending in f, or fe, change f to v, and add, es. Wolf wolves. Self selves. Wife wives. Life lives. Leaf leaves. Loaf, loaves. There are few exceptions like. Roof roofs, reef reefs. Some nouns, have different plural forms. Child children. Man men. Woman women. Mouse mice. Goose geese. Nouns ending in a consonant, and why you'll need to change, the y to an, i, and add, es. Baby babies, gallery galleries. Reality, realities. This does not apply where the final y is not preceded by a consonant or for proper nouns. Toy toys, kidney kidneys. Kennedy, Kennedys. For nouns that end in o, either es is added, or just s, to make a plural, there is no fixed rule. Potato potatoes, hero heroes. Memo memos, cello cellos. For nouns, where another vowel, comes before the o, only s is added, to make a plural. Stereo stereos, video, videos. A few nouns, have the same singular, and plural forms. Sheep. Sheep, 
deer, deer. Series, series, species, species. Water, water, sugar, sugar. Rice, rice, wheat, wheat. And finally, there are some nouns, that maintain their Latin, or Greek form, in the plural. Few examples for reference. Nucleus, nuclei, syllabus, syllabi. Focus, foci, thesis, theses. Crisis, crises, criterion, criteria. Phenomenon, phenomena. Appendix, appendix s or, appendixes. Cactus cacti, or, cactuses. Count nouns and non-count nouns. Count nouns. Can be counted as one or more. Pen, computer, bottle, spoon, desk, cup, television, chair, umbrella. Take an S to form the plural. Pens, computers, bottles, spoons, desks, cups, televisions, chairs, umbrellas. Count nouns. Work with expressions, such as a few, few, many, some, every, each, these, and the number of a few pens, a few computers, many bottles, some spoons, every desk, each cup, these televisions, the number of chairs, a few umbrellas, etc. Count nouns. Work with appropriate articles, a, an, or, the, a pen, the computer, a bottle, the spoon, a desk, the cup, a television, the chair, an umbrella, etc. Do not work with much. For example, you would never say much pens or much computers. Non-count nouns. Work both with, and without an article, a, an, or, the. Sugar is sweet. The sunshine is beautiful. I drink milk. We watch soccer together. Non-count noun. Work with expressions such as, some, any, enough, this, that, and much. I hope to see some sunshine today. This meat is good. She does not speak much Spanish. Do you see any traffic on the road? Do not work with expressions such as these, those, every, each, either, or neither. Possessive nouns. Possessive nouns are used to indicate ownership. Possessive nouns usually are formed by adding an apostrophe and s. John's book. Grandma's mirror. When a noun is plural and ends in s, just add an apostrophe. My parents' house. The teacher's lounge. Possessive nouns. If two people own one thing, add the apostrophe and s to the second person only. John and Mary's new house. David and Sue's wedding. If two people own separate things, add the apostrophe and s for each person. Susan's and Beth's books. Ben's and Jim's offices. Pronouns. A word, that is used, to take the place of a noun. Examples, I, they, their, ourselves, itself, your, my, nobody, who, which, her, we. Personal pronouns. Personal pronouns refer to a person. I go to school. You are a student. They are Koreans. He works here. We gave her food. Pronouns. The word, it, refers to an object. I drank it. It is big. They cut it into halves. It is a small bag. Please make a note of the following pronouns and usages. As subject, object, and reflexives, in singular and plural in first, second, and third person.
verb is a word, that indicates an action, being or state or being. Action verbs. Action verbs express action, and are the most common verbs. Action verbs need, s, at the end with third person, singular subjects. He eats bread. She walks to the station. Negative sentences, need do not, does not, or did not. I do not eat bread. You don't tell me what to do. He does not eat bread. She doesn't understand Hindi. You did not walk to the station. They didn't play today. Do not can be shortened to don't, does not to doesn't, and did not to didn't. Verb. Interrogative sentences, begin with do, does, or did. Do you eat bread? Don't you sleep early? Does he eat bread? Doesn't she go to college? Did she walk to the station? Didn't they go to school today? Carefully note the usage of the verb in the affirmative, negative, and interrogative sentences below. The meaning of the sentence changes when not, is added or while forming a question. Adjectives describe, or modify nouns. Adjectives generally appear, immediately before the noun. A pretty girl. Red flowers. A long stick. Heavy boxes. Warm weather. Commonly, adjectives of opposite meaning are formed by adding a prefix such as un, in, or dis. Important, unimportant. Predictable, unpredictable. Definite, indefinite. Correct, incorrect. Able, disable. Assemble, disassemble. When using a string of adjectives, they should appear in a set order. Size slash shape, plus age, plus color, plus origin, plus material. A big brown house. A small old English desk. A beautiful black Italian leather purse. Delicious Chinese food. The, plus, adjective describes a class, or group of people and acts as a noun. The old, the young, the poor, the rich, the oppressed, the homeless, etc. This popular TV show, is loved by the old. Narendra Modi is liked by the Indian people. Comparative and superlative adjectives. Comparative adjectives compare two things. Superlative adjectives compare more than two things. Commonly, Adjectives that contain only one syllable, or end in Y, use ER to form comparatives and EST to form superlatives. For adjectives ending in Y, change the Y to I, before adding the ER or EST. Examples on the following slide. Adjective, comparative, superlative. Old, older, oldest. Young, younger, youngest. Long. Longer, longest. Short, shorter, shortest. Bright, brighter, brightest. Happy, happier, happiest. Adjectives with two, or more syllables, do not change, but instead, add more to form comparatives, and most to form superlatives. Respectable, more respectable, most respectable. Beautiful, more beautiful most beautiful preferable more preferable most preferable some adjectives have different forms of comparatives and superlatives adjective comparative superlative good better best bad worse worst little less least much many more most far Further, furthest. The word, then, typically appears in comparative sentences. Amy is smarter than Betty. Chad is stronger than Dan. Greg is more diligent than his brother. I have more apples than he. She likes him more than me. Superlatives are typically accompanied by the word, the. Tom is the oldest man in town. Paul is the tallest boy in the neighborhood. 
That shade of blue is the most beautiful color. This is the longest song that I have ever heard. Adverbs modify a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. An adverb tells more about a verb in the sentence. The fire engine runs fast. Listen to his speech carefully. I browse the web frequently. It rained hard. Note the examples of usage of adverbs in various tenses in the table. You will learn more about their usage in sentences later. Commonly, adjectives can be changed to adverbs by adding ly. Slow, slowly. Quick, quickly. Comfortable, comfortably. Loud, loudly. Clear, clearly. Great, greatly. To change adjectives ending in y, into adverbs, change the y, to i, and add li. Happy happily. Easy, easily. Merry merrily. Lazy lazily. Greedy greedily. Usage of coordinating conjunctions. Use of or indicates a choice between two things. Example Do you want a red one or a blue one? Use of so illustrates a result of the first thing. Example This song has been very popular, so I downloaded it. Use of for means because. Example I want to go there again, for it was a wonderful trip. Use of yet indicates contrast with something. Example He performed very well yet he didn't make the final cut. Correlative conjunctions are always used in pairs. Use the below examples to learn them better. Both, and, examples. She won gold medals from both the single and group races. Both TV and television are correct words. Either or, examples. I am fine with either Monday or Wednesday. You can have either apples or pears. More correlative conjunctions. Neither, nor. Examples, he enjoys neither drinking nor gambling. Neither you nor I will get off early today. Not only but also, examples. Not only red but also green looks good on you. She got 90 in not only English but also maths. More subordinating conjunctions. After. Use of after indicates, subsequently to the time when, examples. Please text me after you arrive at the shopping mall. We were forced to stop watching TV after 10 p.m. Before. Before indicates, earlier than the time that. Before he contacted me, I was going to call him. I need to finish the dishes, before my wife gets home. Subordinating conjunctions. Because. Because means for the reason that, examples. They stopped building the house, because it was raining. I love dogs, because they are so cute. How. How means the way in which. I wonder how you did it. He explained how he completed it in a few days. subordinating conjunctions. So that it means in order to. He finished his work as fast as possible, so that he could leave early. He worked very hard, so that he could buy a new car. Until, it means up to the time that. Don't go anywhere until I come back. They won't allow us to sit until everyone arrives. Subordinating conjunctions. Unless, it means except on the condition, example. I will not tell you anything, unless you tell me what you know first. Unless you ask her, you will never know. When, it means at that time, example. When I came in the room, 
everyone looked at me. I woke up, when my baby was crying. Subordinating conjunctions. While. It means during the time, example. Someone called you, while you were at the meeting. We met, while we were working, at the university. Where. Where indicates in the place example. This is where I came from. Please tell me where you are going. Subordinating conjunctions. Whether, it means if it is true or not. We will have a picnic, whether it rains or not. It is time to decide whether we should take action. You need to decide, whether or not you are hungry. What is a preposition? A word used indicating the relationship between a noun or pronoun to another word. A preposition is a word, that links a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase to some other part of the sentence. A preposition is used, to show direction, location, or time, or to introduce an object. On. Used to express a surface of something. I put an egg on the kitchen table. The paper is on my desk. Used to specify days and dates. The garbage truck comes on Wednesdays. I was born on the 14th day of June in 1988. On. Used to indicate a device or machine, such as a phone or computer. He is on the phone right now. She has been on the computer since this morning. Used to indicate a part of the body. The stick hit me on my shoulder. I wear a ring on my finger. Used to indicate the state of something. Everything in this store is on sale. The building is on fire. At. Used to point out specific time. I will meet you at 12 p.m. I will eat dinner at 8 p.m. I will go to bed at 10 p.m. At is also used to indicate a place. There is a party at the clubhouse. We saw a baseball game at the stadium. There is a meeting at the community hall. At. Used to indicate an email address. Please email me at abc at defg.com. Remember to send your resume at hr at resume.com. Used to indicate an activity. I am good at drawing a portrait. I am bad at playing cricket. I am good at badminton. In. Used for unspecific times during a day, month, season, year. She always reads newspapers in the morning. The new semester will start in March. Used to indicate a location or place. She looked me directly in the eyes. I am currently staying in a hotel. Used to indicate a shape, color, or size. The students stood in a circle. This jacket comes in four different size. In. Used to express while doing something. In preparing for the final report, we revised the tone three times. A catchphrase needs to be impressive in marketing a product. Used to indicate a belief, opinion, interest, or feeling. I believe in the next life. We are not interested in gambling. Of. Used for belonging to, relating to, or connected with. The secret of this game is that you can't ever win. The first page of the book describes the author's profile. I always dreamed of being rich and famous. Used to indicate reference. I got married in the summer of 2000. This is a picture of my family. I got a discount of 10% on the purchase. Of. Used to indicate an amount or number. I drank three cups of milk. A large number of people gathered to protest. I had only four hours of sleep during the last two days. He got a perfect score of 10 on his writing assignment. 2. Used to indicate the place, person, or thing that someone or something moves toward, or the direction of something. I am heading to the entrance of the building. The package was mailed to Mr. Kim yesterday. All of us went to the movie theater. Please send it back to me. Used to indicate a limit or an ending point. The snow was piled up to the roof. 
the stock prices rose up to $100. 2. Used to indicate relationship. This letter is very important to your admission. My answer to your question is in this envelope. Do not respond to every little thing in your life. Used to indicate a time or a period. I work 9 to 6, Monday to Friday. It is now 10 to 5. In other words, it is 4 colon 50. 4. Used to indicate the use of something. I baked a cake for your birthday. She has been studying hard for the final exam. Used to mean because of. I am so happy for you. For this reason, I've decided to quit this job. Used to indicate time or duration. He's been famous for many decades. I attended the university for one year only. With. Used to indicate being together or being involved. I ordered a sandwich with a drink. He was with his friend when he saw me. She has been working with her sister at the nail shop. Used to indicate having. I met a guy with green eyes. Were you the one talking with an accent? People with a lot of money are not always happy. With. Used to indicate using. I wrote a letter with the pen you gave me. He cut my hair with his gold scissors. Used to indicate feeling. I am emailing you with my sincere apology. He came to the front stage with confidence. Used to indicate agreement or understanding. Are you with me? Yes, I am completely with you. Over. Used to indicate movement from one place to another. Come over to my house for dinner sometime. Could you roll over? They sent over a gift for his promotion. Used to indicate movement downward. The big tree fell over on the road. Can you bend over and get the dish for me? He pushed it over the edge. Over. Used to indicate more than an expected number or amount. This amount is over our prediction. Kids 12 and over can watch this movie. The phone rang for over a minute. Used to indicate a period of time. I worked there over a year. She did not sleep there over this past month. Bye. Used to indicate proximity. Can I sit by you? He was standing by me. The post office is by the bank. Used to indicate the person that does something in a passive voice sentence. The microwave was fixed by the mechanic. The flowers were delivered by a postman. The branch office was closed by the head office. By. Used to indicate an action with a particular purpose. You can pass the exam by preparing for it. I expressed my feeling toward her by writing a letter. She finally broke the record by pure effort. Used to indicate a mean or method. Please send this package to Russia by airmail. I came here by subway. Now let us learn an interesting part of speech. An interjection is a word that expresses some kind of emotion. It can be used as filler. Interjections do not have a grammatical function in the sentence and are not related to the other parts of the sentence. If an interjection is omitted, the sentence still makes sense. It can stand alone. Interjections do the following in a sentence. One express a feeling wow, oops, oh, examples. Oops, I'm sorry. That was my mistake. Wow. It is beautiful. Oh, I didn't know that. Two, say yes or no yes, no, nope examples. Yes. I will do it. No, I am not going to go there. Nope. That's not what I want. More usages of interjections. 3. Call attention yo, hey. Yo, will you throw the ball back? Hey, I just wanted to talk to you about the previous incident. 4. Indicate a pause well, um, hum. Well, what I meant was nothing like that. Um, here is our proposal. Hmm. You really need to be on a diet. 
capitalization means using a capital letter, capital A instead of small a. The use of capital letters helps readers read your writing without confusion. It is also interpreted as a sign of respect in writing. Always capitalize the following. The first word in a sentence. I grew up in India. She left a message on my phone. The pronoun I. This country is where I dreamed of. This is where I played. Always capitalize the first letter of a proper noun, specific name. David wants to play soccer with us. This letter is from Chang. I graduated from the University of New York. I like Coca-Cola. She likes Godiva chocolates. The first letter of months, days, and holidays, not seasons. Today is June 8, 2011. Susie's birthday is this Thursday. The shops are closed on Easter. This summer is going to be very hot. Capitalize the following. The first letter of nationalities, religions, races of people, and languages. We often eat Italian food. I want to master Spanish, Chinese, and Russian. There is one Christian church in my town. The first letter in a person's title. This is Dr. Simon. I got it from Mr. Tom. Geographic areas, cities, states, countries, mountains, oceans, rivers, etc. My destination is Paris, France. Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Historical periods. The Renaissance began in the 14th century. The Qing dynasty is the last dynasty in China. The first letter of each major word in the title of a book, movie, article, etc. Tolstoy's War and Peace is my favorite novel. I found the article How to Write a Good Cover Letter in this magazine. Salman Khan's Kick is not such a good film. Now let us study more interesting and equally confusing words in English, homonyms. Homonyms sound the same, are spelt the same, but have different meanings. Club, somewhere to dance. Club, large, heavy object that people get hit with. Fine, money you owe for bring things back late. Fine, feeling okay. Rock, a type of music. Rock, made of stone. Let us now learn about homophones. Homophones sound the same, are spelt differently and have different meanings. Aloud, aloud, ale, ale, air, air. Ascent, ascent, band, band, bear, bear. Birth, birth, boy, buoy, bore, bore. Fair, fair, cereal, cereal, metal, metal. Scent, scent. Cord, cord, knot, knot. Root, root, pale, pale, peace, peace. Synonyms. A synonym is a word that means exactly the same as, or very nearly the same as, another word in the same language. For example, close is a synonym of shut. Note that a synonym may share an identical meaning with another word but the two words are not necessarily interchangeable. For example, blow up and explode have the same meaning, but blow up is informal, used more in speech, and explode is more formal, used more in writing and careful speech. Few examples of synonyms are given for your reference. There are many more in the English language. Close and shut. Blow up and explode. Blow up and inflate. Shallow and superficial. Eager, earnest, and keen. Spontaneous, impromptu, and unplanned. Antonyms. An antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. Antonym is the opposite of synonym. Here are some more examples. Good and bad. Small and big. Easy and hard or difficult. Soft and hard. Male and female. Up and down. Go and come. Antonyms can also be created by adding a prefix. Made by adding prefix on, un. 
able and unable. Do and undo. Made by adding prefix in, in. Decent and indecent. Human and inhuman. Made by adding prefix non, non. Essential and non-essential. Sense and nonsense. Let us now learn a few simple sentence formations. Using I'm. I'm is an abbreviation, or short form for the word I am. It is used in combination with other words, to tell someone about yourself, or to describe something you are doing. Here are some examples. I'm 23 years old. I'm hungry. You can also, add descriptive words with I'm such as. I'm extremely tired. I'm very happy. Now let us first learn sentences with I'm in, I'm at, and I'm on. Firstly, I'm in. Most commonly, you would use the word in when entering a physical location such as a room or a building. Here are some examples. I'm in the shower. I'm in the lobby. I'm in a car. I'm in a house. I'm in a school. I'm at. Using the word, at, helps tell someone, where you currently are. The difference between, at, and, in, is that the physical location is general. Here are some examples. I'm at the grocery. I'm at the mall. I'm at the doctor's office. I'm at the park. I'm at the airport. However, in some cases you can use, at, and, in, interchangeably. Here are some examples. I'm at the mall. I'm in the mall. I'm at the park. I'm in the park. I'm at the grocery. I'm in the grocery. I'm on. Using the word on, is referring to a non-physical location, such as your time being utilized, by something else. Here are some examples. I'm on the phone. I'm on my computer. I'm on a bus. I'm on a call. I'm on a flight. I'm good at. Again, I'm is used here as I am. Good at informs someone, what you excel at, and are comfortable doing. Here are some examples. I'm good at drawing. I'm good at driving. I'm good at sports. I'm good at writing. I'm good at math. I'm good at dancing. I'm plus, verb. I'm is a contraction of the words I am. By adding a verb, to I'm, this lets you express an action, or occurrence about yourself. Here are some examples. I'm eating lunch. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm scared. I'm crying. I'm typing an email. I'm combing my hair. I am exercising. I am sad. I am learning. I'm getting. When combining the words I am, and, getting, you are telling someone, you are gaining possession, being affected by, or have plans, to seek out and obtain a particular thing. Here are some examples. I'm getting better. I'm getting ready for bed. I'm getting a toothache. I'm getting married. I'm getting tired. I'm getting a new car. I'm getting a job. I have plus, noun. By using the words, I have, you are informing someone of something you have possession of or have acquired. Here are some examples. I have a dog. I have a nice keychain. I have a basketball. I have a computer. I have a headache. Using the words cannot and won't with I have. By adding these, you can express, what you will not put up with, or allow. Here are some examples. I cannot have that dog in my house. I cannot have you over tonight. I won't have anything to do with that. I won't have it without the cover. I have plus, past participle. Again, I have shows possession, or something acquired. 
By adding a past participle, you are informing someone of a past, or completed action done by you. Here are some examples. I have driven a car. I have forgotten the words. I have read that book. I have eaten at that restaurant before. I have flown in an airplane. I have seen you before. I have written a letter. I used to plus, verb. Used to expresses something that was done in the past, and is not usually done now. Here are some examples. I used to jog every day. I used to smoke. I used to live in California. I used to go to the beach every day. I used to like vegetables. I used to start work at 7 o'clock. You can also add the word don't to suggest that someone is not required to do something. I don't have to switch schools. I don't have to use the telephone. I don't have to go to the bathroom. I don't have to leave. I don't have to unpack my bags. I don't have to give you any advice. I would like to plus, verb. This sentence lets someone know what you would be interested in doing. This can be a physical, mental, or verbal action. Here are some examples. I would like to answer that question. I would like to compete in a cooking contest. I would like to explain myself. I would like to practice. I would like to become a doctor. I would like to thank you. I would like to meet the president. I plan to plus, verb. Plan to describe something that you would like to do, in the near future. Here are some examples. I plan to find a new house. I plan to surprise my parents. I plan to wash my car. I plan to impress my boss. I plan to watch a movie. I plan to read a book. I've decided to plus, verb. I've is the short form of I have, and, by including the word decided, you are stating that you have made a decision, or come to a conclusion. Here are some examples. I've decided to accept the job. I've decided to complete my degree. I've decided to leave my bad habits. I've decided to extend my membership at the gym. I've decided to hand over my responsibilities. I was about to plus, verb. When stating I was about to, you are informing someone that you are going to be doing something at that moment or in the very near future. Here are some examples. I was about to go out. I was about to go to bed. I was about to go to work. I was about to say the same thing. I was about to call you. I was about to watch television. I didn't mean to plus, verb. The word didn't is a contraction of the words did not. When using it in a sentence, with the words mean to you are informing someone that you did something, you regret or are sorry for. This could have been a physical, mental, or verbal action. Here are some examples. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to call you so late. I did not mean to say those things. I did not mean to cause trouble. I don't have time to plus, verb. The word don't is a contraction of the words do not. When adding have time to, you are simply stating that you have other obligations, and all other things considered must wait. Here are some examples. I don't have time to explain. I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to watch my favorite TV show. I don't have time to talk. I promise not to plus, verb. When using promise not to, you are stating, you will not do a particular thing. Here are some examples. I promise not to tell. I promise not to leave without you. I promise not to be so late. I promise not to hurt your feelings. 
I promise not to wake you up. When using the word promise, you are giving your word, that what you are saying is true. You might also be assuring someone, a guarantee that you will follow through, on what you are saying to them. Here are some examples. I promise I am telling the truth. I promise to practice my math. I promise to call you. I promise I will tell you. I promise I will come to your party. I'd rather plus, verb. I'd is a contraction of the words I had, or, I would. When using it with the word rather, you are suggesting, you would like to do, or prefer one thing, more than another. Here are some examples. I'd rather talk about this later. I'd like to eat at home than go get fast food. I'd rather stay late than come in early tomorrow. I had rather go home than stay out too late. I would rather exercise than sit on the couch all day. I feel like plus, verbing. Here you are expressing, to someone, something you would enjoy doing. Here are some examples. I feel like going for a bike ride. I feel like going to the beach. I feel like having a snack. I feel like dancing. I feel like having friends over to my house. I feel like watching TV. By adding don't, or, do not, you can change what you are saying, to express something you would not enjoy, or express a concern about something. Here are some examples. I don't feel like leaving yet. I don't feel like explaining. I don't feel like going to bed. I do not feel comfortable talking about it. I do not feel like we are going in the right direction. I don't feel like having dinner tonight. Let us now look at the combination of, I can't help, plus, verbing. The word can't, is contraction for cannot. Combined with help, you are communicating something, you are unable to control, or having a hard time, gaining a grasp for. This can be a physical, or mental action. Here are some examples. I can't help thinking about it. I can't help shopping so much. I can't help smiling when I see her. I can't help eating so much. I cannot help biting my nails when I am nervous. I cannot help smoking when I have been drinking. I was busy plus, verbing. When using the word was, you are referring to something, in a past tense, or something that happened before. Combining it with the word busy, you can express something, that was occupying you, in a past time. Here are some examples. I was busy working. I was busy cooking dinner. I was busy talking on the phone. I was busy cleaning the house. I was busy studying for my test. I'm not used to plus, verbing. Here you are using, not used to, to inform someone that you are unfamiliar, or uncomfortable, with a topic at hand. Here are some examples. I'm not used to talking in English. I'm not used to studying so much. I'm not used to talking in front of groups of people. I'm not used to traveling so much. I'm not used to working so early. I'm not used to drinking so much. I want you to plus, verb. I want you to, is telling someone, that you have a desire, or would like for them, to do something. Here are some examples. I want you to clean the dishes. I want you to come home right after school. I want you to call once you get there. I want you to explain yourself to me. I want you to educate me. By using the word, need, instead of want, you are expressing something, that is required, or wanted. Here are some examples. I need you to study harder in school. I need you to stop and listen to me. I need you to greet our guests. I need you to introduce me to your family. I need to request a refund. I need to use the washroom now. I need to collect a hundred signatures. I'm here to plus, verb. You are informing someone, 
that you are at a particular place, to accomplish something. Here are some examples. I'm here to apply for the job. I'm here to take a test. I'm here to watch a movie. I'm here to work on your computer. I'm here to raise awareness for cancer. I'm here to receive the award. I have something plus, verb. When using the expression, I have something, you are communicating, that you possess something, or need to do something, that is unspecified, or undetermined. Here are some examples. I have something to share with you. I have something important to tell you. I have something special planned for your birthday. I have something to attend tonight. I have something to ask you. I'm looking forward to. When telling someone, that you are, looking forward to, you are saying that, you are waiting or hoping, for something, especially with pleasure. Here are some examples. I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to spending time with my family. I'm looking forward to learning the English language. I am looking forward to visiting another country. I am looking forward to graduating from college. I am looking forward to watching the baseball game. I'm calling to plus, verb. When using the words, I'm calling you are stating that, you are actually using the phone, to call, and relay information. Here are some examples. I'm calling to tell you about my day. I'm calling to accept your invitation. I'm calling to complain about something. I'm calling to thank you. I'm calling to remind you of our dinner plans. I'm calling to report a lost wallet. I'm working on plus, noun. I'm, is a contraction, for the words I am. The phrase, working on, relays a physical, or mental effort, towards an accomplishment. Here are some examples. I'm working on a big project. I'm working on training my dog. I'm working on my homework. I am working on a new idea. I am working on my computer. I'm working on my website. I'm sorry to plus, verb. Saying you are, sorry to, expresses a feeling of sympathy, or regret. Here are some examples. I'm sorry to be so late. I'm sorry to hear about your sick mother. I'm sorry to waste your time. I'm sorry to make you feel so sad. I'm sorry to call so late. I'm sorry to admit what I did. I'm sorry to end this relationship. I'm thinking of plus, verbing. Thinking refers to, a process of thought, forming an opinion, or judgment. When expressing, I am thinking of, you are letting someone know, what you are personally thinking. Here are some examples. I'm thinking of watching the new movie. I'm thinking of following a healthy diet. I am thinking of launching a new website. I am thinking of moving to a new city. I am thinking of opening up a store. I'll help you plus, verb. This lets you inform someone, that you are willing, to provide assistance. This could refer to something physical, or mental, like helping someone, to think or remember something. Here are some examples. I'll help you cook dinner tonight. I'll help you raise money for your charity. I will help you park your car. I will help you provide all the information you need. I will help you stop smoking. I will help you shop for groceries. It's my turn to plus, verb. The word it's, is a contraction of the words, it is. When stating my turn, you are telling someone, that it is time to change position, or position focuses onto you. Here are some examples. It's my turn to walk you home. It's my turn to do laundry. It is my turn to pay for dinner. It is my turn to provide an answer. It is my turn to attempt solving the problem. It's hard for me to plus, verb. 
when saying that something is hard for me, you are informing someone that what you are talking about is difficult or challenging for you. Here are some examples. It's hard for me to accept what you are telling me. It's hard for me to argue your point. It's hard for me to depend on you. It is hard for me to guarantee your success. It is hard for me to handle so much pressure. I'm having a hard time plus, verbing. By stating you are having a hard time, you are letting someone know, you are having difficulty, with something. This could be something physical or mental and something that could be overcome with effort. Here are some examples. I'm having a hard time writing. I'm having a hard time understanding you. I'm having a hard time answering your question. I'm having a hard time downloading songs to my iPod. With the addition of an adverb, you can express in more detail just how difficult something is for you. Here are some examples. I'm having an extremely hard time trusting you. I'm having an extremely hard time with my wife. I'm having a very hard time finding a job. I'm having a very hard time finding parts for my car. I think I should plus, verb. Here you are telling someone, that you feel strongly, about doing a particular action. Here are some examples. I think I should practice my reading. I think I should join a study group. I think I should handle this as soon as possible. I think I should earn my degree. I think I should explain myself. By adding the word, don't, you have changed, what you are conveying, from something you are thinking of doing, to something you are against. Here are some examples. I do not think I should complain so much. I do not think I should attend that event. I do not think I should borrow more money. I do not think I should doubt you. I do not think I should decide until later. I've heard that plus, subject, plus verb. You are letting someone know, that you are aware of something, or that, you have been informed of something, that is taking place. This could be something, that has already happened, or something happening, in the near future. I've is a contraction of the words, I have. Here are some examples. I've heard that you got a new job. I've heard that you got a new car. I've heard that you fix computers. I've heard that there is no school next week. It occurred to me that, subject plus verb. The word occurred, informs someone, that something has come to mind, or has been found. You are letting someone know, that you suddenly have thought, or remembered, about something. Here are some examples. It occurred to me that I forgot your birthday. It occurred to me that we both belong to the same gym. It occurred to me that we enjoy a lot of the same things. It occurred to me that eating healthy makes me feel better. Thank you for saying thank you is telling someone you appreciate what they have done. This can either be something they did for you or for someone else. Here are some examples. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for helping me move. Thank you for informing me about the job opening. Thank you for mailing that package for me. Thank you for replying to my email. Thank you for providing me with the answers. Thank you for heating up dinner. Can I plus, verb. When ending a sentence, with a question mark, you are asking the person, or people you are talking to, a question for which, you would like an answer. Here you are asking permission to do a particular action. Here are some examples. Can I answer your question? Can I attend the event? Can I call you tomorrow? Can I help you with your homework? Can I introduce you to my coworkers? Can I inform you of some bad news? 
Can I get plus, noun. The phrase can I get, can be used in a few different ways. You can use it to ask a question. Here are some examples. Can I get a cup of water? Can I get a dog? Can I get lunch? Can I get sugar in my coffee? Can I get popcorn at the movie? You can also use, can I, when offering, to help someone or, do something for them. Here are some examples. Can I get you another drink? Can I help you move that? Can I recommend a good place to eat? Can I take you home? Can I help you finish your project? I'm not sure if plus, subject and verb. I'm not sure expresses a feeling of uncertainty, or lack of confidence, on a particular matter. Here are some examples. I am not sure if they will offer me the job. I'm not sure if my wife will understand. I'm not sure if I understand your question. I am not sure if it will happen. I am not sure if my mom will notice. I am not sure if they will permit us to park there. Do you mind if I plus, verb? You are asking someone, in present tense, if they object to something you are asking. Here are some examples. Do you mind if I excuse myself? Do you mind if we left early? Do you mind if I take a nap? Do you mind if I ask your mom? Do you mind if it snows? You could also use the word would, in some cases. Here are some examples. Would you mind if we went out to eat? Would you mind if I opened the window? Would you mind telling me what you're doing? Would you mind being quiet for a minute? Would you mind if I changed the channel? I should have plus, past participle. Should is the past tense, of the word shall. When using the words should have, you are talking about, something in the past that you ought to, or might have done. Here are some examples. I should have gone with you. I should have studied more for my test. I should have read the directions before starting. I should have eaten breakfast this morning. I should have listened to your advice. Shall, is something, that will take place, or exist in the future. Here are some examples. I shall leave tomorrow. I shall finish the job next week. I shall see it tomorrow. I shall go outside if it's nice out. I shall pay for this later. I wish I could plus, verb. You are expressing a desire, to do something. Here are some examples. I wish I could sing better. I wish I could settle the argument. I wish I could remember his name. I wish I could replace my old car with a new one. I wish I could play outside. I wish I could write better. You should plus, verb. Here you are suggesting an obligation, or duty, that needs to take place, either now, or in the near future. Here are some examples. You should do your homework before going outside. You should replace your headlights on your car. You should stop smoking. You should smile more. You should train your dog. You should trust what they say. You're supposed to plus, verb. Your, is a contraction of the words, you are. When using your, with the word supposed to, you are making a suggestion, that something you strongly believe, ought to happen. Here are some examples. You're supposed to keep that secret. You're supposed to stop when at a red light. You are supposed to fasten your seat belt. You are supposed to invite all your friends. You are supposed to encourage one another. You are supposed to decide before next Thursday. You seem plus, adjective. When stating you seem, you're referring to the person, you are talking to, and expressing that they are giving the impression of, or appear to be. Here are some examples. You seem bored. You seem easy to get along with. You seem happy to hear the good news. 
You seem afraid of roller coasters. You seem embarrassed about what happened. You seem decisive about your choice. You'd better plus, verb. You'd is a contraction, of you had, or you would, you are making a suggestion to someone, for a particular action. Here are some examples. You'd better exercise. You'd better help out. You'd better listen to your parents. You had better not come home late. You had better change your attitude. You would be good at teaching. You would do well at math. Are you into plus, noun? Here you are asking a question, about an interest they might have, or something they might enjoy doing. Here are some examples. Are you into soccer? Are you into wine tasting? Are you into working out at home or at the gym? Are you into jogging? Are you into painting? Are you into fixing cars? Are you trying to plus, verb? You are asking someone, if they are attempting, to do something. This can be, something mentally, or physically. Here are some examples. Are you trying to ignore me? Are you trying to manage your money? Are you trying to memorize that song? Are you trying to offer your help? Are you trying to remain calm? Are you trying to remember her name? Please plus, verb. Please is generally used, in a polite request, when asking someone, to do something. Here are some examples. Please pass me the salt. Please order me the steak and potatoes. Please wash your hands before dinner. Please wait outside until we are ready. Please zip up your coat before you go outside. Please stand back. The word please, can also mean, to give enjoyment, or satisfaction to. Here are some examples. The smell of the flowers was very pleasing. May it please the court to admit this into evidence. I was very pleased with how the children behaved. You cannot please everyone all the time. She was pleased with the dress. Don't plus, verb. The word don't, is a contraction of the words, do not. It is said to convey a message, of what should not be done. Here are some examples. Don't try and fool me. Don't cause any more trouble. Don't chew gum in class. Do not behave that way. Do not argue with me. Do not arrive late for your meeting. Do you like? With this question, you are asking someone, what they prefer or enjoy. Here are some examples. Do you like traveling on a plane? Do you like watching baseball on TV? Do you like skiing or snowboarding? Do you like spending time with me? Do you like playing video games? Do you like listening to music? How often do you? When asking this question, you are inquiring, how often, or how frequent, someone does a particular thing. Here are some examples. How often do you exercise? How often do you change your password? How often do you need to go to the dentist? How often do you receive your magazine in the mail? How often do you report to your supervisor? How often do you talk to your parents? Do you want me to plus, verb? To want is to feel, or have a desire for. When saying do you want me to, you're asking someone, if there is anything, you can do for them, or assist them with. Here are some examples. Do you want me to pick up the kids? Do you want me to fix your flat tire? Do you want me to help you read that book? Do you want me to remind you? Do you want me to remove my shoes? The word want, can also be used to express something. You would like someone else to do, or that something, you personally would enjoy. Here are some examples. I want you to come over. I want you to make a decision. I want you to water the flowers. I want to understand what you are trying to say. I want to be better at swimming. I want to be more involved at church. 
What do you think about plus, verbing? This question asks someone, their opinion about a topic. Here are some examples. What do you think about having a cup of tea with me? What do you think about sailing? What do you think about staying here another night? What do you think about planting new trees in the backyard? What do you think about living in a new city? What do you think about filming our vacation? Why don't we plus, verb? Don't is a contraction of, do not. When using why, you are asking a question, that involves yourself, and the person you are talking to. Here are some examples. Why don't we go bowling tonight? Why don't we pick some fresh flowers? Why don't we play a game of chess? Why don't we save more money? Why don't we test this before using it? Why don't we post our results online? Why don't we gather more firewood? It's too bad that. Too bad means regrettable or unfortunate. When using it in a sentence, you are expressing a concern or regret for what has taken place. The topic being discussed could have happened to you, the person you are talking to, or someone or something else. Here are some examples. It's too bad that she lost her job. It's too bad that you have to go. It's too bad that tickets are all gone to that concert. It's too bad that she got hurt. It's too bad that you do not understand. You could have plus, past participle. Using could have, you are speaking about something, that was, should be, or would be. You are stating that, they had other options that could have been chosen. Here are some examples. You could have completed it sooner. You could have done better on your exam. You could have given me more time to get ready. You could have heard that from someone else. You could have written him a letter. You could have thought of something to do. You could have upset her by saying that. If I were you, I would plus, verb. Here you are giving an example of, what decision you would take, given the circumstances. This can be in past tense or in a conditional present. Here are some examples. If I were you, I would enjoy my vacation. If I were you, I would explain what happened. If I were you, I would continue working until it is done. If I were you, I would book my reservations now. If I were you, I would answer the question. By adding have, after the word would you are talking about something, in the past tense. Here are some examples. If I were you, I would have enjoyed my vacation. If I were you, I would have explained what happened. If I were you, I would have continued working until it was done. If I were you, I would have booked my reservations now. If I were you, I would have answered the question. It's going to be plus, adjective. You're informing someone, what something is going to be like. This could be something, you are going to do, see, or feel. Here are some examples. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be easy. It's going to be depressing. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be disgusting. You can also add, he or she, or a person's name, to describe how they might react to something. Here are some examples. He is going to be tough to deal with. He is going to be terrific at that. She is going to be relieved to hear that. She is going to be scared after watching that movie. Sally is going to be successful. Mike is going to be grumpy after I tell him. It looks like plus, noun. You could be describing, how something is similar, or appears to be by the way it looks. Here are some examples. It looks like a balloon. It looks like a jellyfish. It looks like a banana. It looks like a fish.
that's why plus, subject and verb. That's is short for that is. Here you are telling someone, because of this, or therefore. Here are some examples. That's why people admire you. That's why she appears so happy. That's why babies crawl before they can walk. That is why you help out people in need. That is why you lock your doors when you leave home. That is why you use it for emergencies. It's time to plus, verb. You are letting someone know that, something is required to be done, at the present time. Here are some examples. It's time to say goodbye. It's time to ask for a raise. It's time to collect our money. It's time to change the clocks. It is time to enjoy ourselves. It is time to help out. The point is that plus, subject and verb. By stating the point is, you are stating in your opinion, the meaning about what is actually happening. Here are some examples. The point is that if you study you will do well in school. The point is that she does not understand. The point is that we need this done today. The point is that snakes can be dangerous. The point is that if we do not leave now we will be late. The point is that she needs to be more responsible. The point is that we need to work together. How was plus, noun. By using the words how was, you are asking someone a question, about something that happened, or something they did in the past. Here are some examples. How was your meeting? How was the birthday party? How was the airplane ride? How were roads when you drove home? How were people acting after what happened? How were holidays with the family? How about plus, verbing? You're asking someone, their opinion on something, or if they would like, to do something. Here are some examples. How about singing? How about folding the laundry for me? How about helping us out? How about describing to me what happened? How about comparing prices before we buy it? How about considering it? How about following me to their house? What if plus, subject and verb? Here you are asking a question, about in the event of, or, in the event that, Usually you are looking for an answer at the time of the question that is being asked. Here are some examples. What if I miss the bus? What if I were late to dinner? What if I don't understand? What if someone sees me? What if no one is home? What if I do not finish on time? How much does it cost to plus, verb? You are simply asking, how much you would need to pay? to do something. Here are some examples. How much does it cost to own a house? How much does it cost to play a round of golf? How much does it cost to repair my car? How much would it cost to run a website? How much would it cost to rent a car? How much would it cost to go to the movies? When replacing the word the with, your or our, you can ask what the chances, personally, that the topic will happen. Here are some examples. What are the chances of you staying home today? What are your chances of getting the job? What are your chances of improving? What are our chances of staying together? What are our chances of working together? What are our chances of going together? There is something wrong with plus, noun. You are informing someone, that there is something, not right, or out of the ordinary. Here are some examples. There is something wrong with my laptop. There is something wrong with my car. There is something wrong with my cell phone. There is something wrong with your answering machine. There is something wrong with your attitude. There is something wrong with your dog. There is something wrong with our alarm clock. Let's not plus, verb. 
the word let's is formed from the words, let us. Here you are requesting that, something not take place, at this moment, or that what is happening, needs to be contained, or lessened. Here are some examples. Let's not discuss this now. Let's not stay here too long. Let's not stop anywhere on the way. Let us not get too excited. Let us not worry too much. Let us not interrupt them when they are talking. Let us help you. Let's say that plus, subject and verb. Let's is a contraction for, let us. You are suggesting to someone that you should both agree, on what you will communicate to someone else. Here are some examples. Let's say we found it. Let's say that we enjoy being with them. Let's say that we had a good time. Let's say that it's hard to decide. Let's say that we have to go. Let's say that we can host. Let's say that the movie was really good. There's no need to plus, verb. The word there's, is a contraction of the words, there is or there has. When expressing no need, you are stating that the action, does not need to take place. Here are some examples. There's no need to worry. There's no need to be upset. There's no need to act so shy. There's no need to rush off. There's no need to talk now. There is no need to bother him. There is no need to stop now. It takes plus, time, plus to plus, verb. You are letting someone know, how long it will take, to do a particular thing. Here are some examples. It takes 45 minutes for me to get ready. It takes 4 quarters to complete a football game. It takes 7 seconds for my car to go 60 miles per hour. It takes years to learn to play guitar. It takes 15 minutes to get to downtown. It takes me 1 hour to cook. Please make sure that plus, subject and verb. You are asking someone, to make sure that a particular thing, happens or takes place. Here are some examples. Please make sure that she wakes up on time. Please make sure that she gets to school. Please make sure that dinner is ready when we get home. Please make sure that your assignment is done. Please make sure that the water is not too hot. Please make sure that she is getting along with her new friends. Please make sure you record our favorite TV show. Please make sure that you don't stay out too late. Here's to plus, noun. Here's to, is used in a way of celebrating, or identifying a person, place, or thing of significance. It is usually said, while toasting someone at dinner, or signaling to someone, or something after an event. Here are some examples. Here's to the winner. Here's to your marriage. Here's to the new year. Here's to great friends. Here's to starting a new job. Here is to a wonderful day. Here is to great memories. It's no use plus, verbing. It's is a contraction for it is. By stating, it's no use, you are saying that, what you or someone else is doing, is not recommended or uncalled for. Here are some examples. It's no use crying. It's no use separating them. It's no use talking to her. It's no use attempting to please him. It's no use arguing about it. It's no use behaving that way. It's no use cleaning up. There's no way plus, subject and verb. There's is a contraction of the words, there is. By stating there's no way, you are relaying a thought of doubt, about an event taking place now, or in the future. Here are some examples. There's no way you finish on time. There's no way we complete on time. There's no way your mother approves. There's no way no one claims it. There's no way he can fix it. There's no way he can handle the news. There is no way he missed it. It's very kind of you to plus, verb. When saying it is kind of you, you are saying that what someone has done, or said was very appreciated, or welcomed. Here are some examples. 
It's very kind of you to offer me the job. It's very kind of you to listen to me. It's very kind of you to join me. It's very kind of you to invite us. It's very kind of you to inform us what happened. There's nothing plus, subject, plus can plus, verb. There's is a contraction of the words there is. When using the word nothing you are suggesting that something cannot happen or be done. Here are some examples. There's nothing you can harm. There's nothing the police can identify. There's nothing we can agree on. There's nothing we can join. There's nothing she can cook. There's nothing my dog can learn. By using the word can, or can't, you change the expression, to mean that all is possible. Here are some examples. There is nothing I cannot ask for. There's nothing we cannot accomplish. There's nothing our dog cannot open. There's nothing that truck cannot move. There is nothing Superman cannot do.